So one good thing that's still happening, that uh, Canada has the advantage over the United States. We talk about the U.S. and Canada a lot. And one of the advantages we have is we're still giving money to Ukraine for the most ridiculous things. Now, Canada just gave... Four or sorry, three billion for the entirety of 2024 to Zelensky, you know, Trudeau, and then hugged it out. But once you scroll past, you know, the military assistance, the cyber assistance, they really started to get into some ridiculous stuff. I'll make this bigger and you tell me how you feel about it. Just jump in whenever. One of the first things is 15 million for a, a museum. So the Canadian taxpayer is paying a, a good 15 million here to fund a museum. That's about the heinous crimes of the Soviet Union that killed millions in Ukraine in the 30s. Now, I'm for all for them having a museum to commemorate this, but why do Canadians need to pay for it? And that's not even the most ridiculous thing that's in there. You've got mental health services. You've got local developments. But what's one of the strangest things that I've ever heard in my life? we scroll down here is the gender inclusive demining for sustainable futures in Ukraine, <laughs> which is involving $4 million. So this project aims to safeguard the lives and livelihoods of Ukrainians, including women and internally displaced persons. So they're providing working capacity to key national stakeholders. Stakeholders is one of those words they use a lot now to promote gender transformative mine action in Ukraine. Now with the company that they're using for this is called the Halo uh, Trust, and it started in the late 90s. I'm going to bring it up here. Sorry, the late 80s. And they started having this organization that would, you know, get dispose of landmines all around the world. But what what's weird about this corporation, this sorry, this charity, is how much they say how great it is to involve women in the very dangerous act of getting rid of landmines and anti-tank mines it says clearing landmines inspires confidence by making land safe it also it's also empowering for men and women alike with training and a living wage they can con take control of their destiny and they go through this whole thing about how amazing it is about women in angola zimbabwe iraq how amazing it is that women are you know getting rid of landmines now, this is actually was my trade when I was in the military, and I rarely bring this up, but there's nothing, there's absolutely zero things that are empowering about dismantling a mine. Let me tell you from firsthand experience, none of my friends in the army would say this was an empowering experience. I think we should have more women do it because they'll become empowered. And, and this is just part of the the endless amounts of things that they said in this new uh, bounty of money for the Ukraine that has gender in it. They are saying that there needs to be gender equality in rebuilding the country. Now, in countries like this, Anomaly, do you think that this is more of, you know, dressing up the fact that there aren't men of age available during war times to demine these things in a war effort, especially Ukraine, where they say, you know, lines are thin or do you think that there's any sort of merit to this and in a broader aspect what about giving more money to ukraine how do you feel well i'm just fine i'm happy that people are finally addressing the uh real issues because i was like everyone's talking about the economy the border <laughs> you know like crime rape and i'm like when are people gonna talk about women in land mining <laughs> i've been i've been talking about it for 20 years and as you know you know conservative <laughs> inc has been blacklisting me because they don't want people, they don't want women in land mining. Let's just put it that way. No, but, you know, messed up jokes aside. Yeah, that's crazy. That's abs absolutely unreal. Um, the Holodomor Museum, which is like interesting that they're building a Holodomor Museum because there's other museums, obviously, that they build like a lot of times. I've, but maybe in other countries they have other museums. I don't know. But w we will say this is like, didn't the Bolsheviks and like the communists do? Uh, the Holodomor and it's like now you have the Bolsheviks like pretending to be like liberals giving them a museum while they're literally doing the same stuff they're like here's the museum to remember the last time the Bolsheviks like took over your country or, or killed you and we're literally like getting you to go kill yourself in Russia as we're doing this and you know the only way we could do this is if women get to disarm landmines and it's like the mind fuckery of like doing this is like astronomical and the fact that they have like canadians doing it and justin trudeau like smiling about it dude i was just like i didn't hear about this until you said it 
the levels of sneakery involved in this are just like top tier. Like I, I'm almost impressed if I wasn't so disgusted because it's like you're getting taxpayers from Canada and Justin Trudeau to pay for a museum to remember the Bolsheviks who that same ideology is now taking over Ukraine. And, and that's also in the bill is like them pushing that type of ideology onto Ukrainians. Dude, I'm speechless. Well, here's another lovely part of the, the the billions going over there almost a million dollars and this is just going to reek of language about propaganda it says nine hundred thirty thousand dollars to for strengthening truth transparency and democracy to counter disinformation <sighs> canada is providing funding to internews ukraine to help enhance the literacy and fact-checking capabilities of ukraine's media in order to better counter the disinformation in the country this project includes a comprehensive skills transfer program to enhance the capacity of Ukrainian journalists. Blah, 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 blah. You go back down to the bottom and it says this initiative will also address gender disparity issues in the Ukrainian media. They mentioned gender in this this package of aid seven different times and it's like gender disparity, gender responsive, mine action. It's like where... <laughs> Dude, wait, wait, read that one real quick. Gender responsive mine action operation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Geneva International Center for Humanitarian Demining Support Program. Holy Canada, one and a half million. Canada recognizes the critical importance of decontaminating Ukraine's territory as quickly and effective as possible um, for reconstruction to protect people and communities. This funding will support the efforts of the Geneva International Center. So not only are we giving money to Ukraine, we're giving money to a Swiss humanitarian effort who works in Ukraine. Um, to enhance the cap capacity of Ukrainian mine action institutions to implement effective and gender responsive mine action operations, develop country appropriate information management solutions, and lead efficient mine action donor coordination platforms. So basically just fund this other not-for-profit that somebody probably works for. Dude, gender responsive mine action operations. Like, they're literally just writing this stuff like it's not hilarious on the Canadian website. Like... Dude, it's 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 disarming minds where it's one of <laughs> I'm not saying it's a top 10 most dangerous job, but I would assume it's pretty damn dangerous because if you don't do it right, it blows up like when mines and war fields happen and, and the war's over like this is a highly dangerous like I've even heard in Hawaii like they're like, oh, out there like, you know, they think there might be mines, but they're not sure like this. Is, what does gender have to do with it um, w with the fact checking thing like 900 something K to fact checking operations and news disinformation. This would be a great documentary. It could be very straightforward. Just an hour of figuring out where all that 900,000 <laughs> is going and just like making them say like who's getting it and what they're doing. Like this is Charles Wentworth. I don't know why I just went with a random <laughs> commercial name, Charles Wentworth Jr. It's like this is this is Johnny J Jacoby, you know, and he's uh, he's getting 50,000. And, he, and he's going to like sit here and say this, like, I want to know like every detail of like how that money is being spent to who and what co companies or corporations or nonprofits and how they're going to determine what's real or what's not like, what's, what's, what's a fact to them. You know, like a fact to me is like a uh, water is a, uh, you know, you drink water to survive. It's not like the Putin puppet, uh, Andrew, uh, it, it should be banished from Canadian infrastructure. Unreal, dude. That's yeah, dude, that's, that's, it's really funny in a messed up way, but like the gender mind thing that did good find you're good at what you do. That's why I wanted to work with you. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know why it keeps going back to this view. Um, this whole thing just reeks, especially that paragraph just reeks of, we don't plan on anybody reading this. Cause as soon as you hear countering <laughs> disinformation from a government, that means propaganda. And the sad thing is, is up here, it's bipartisan. The conservative party came out immediately and said, we will always support Ukraine. I I'm guessing it's just something they don't want to get into right now. They're battling, you know, the liberal government on a lot of fronts. But still, I don't give you points at all for just being like, Ukraine now and forever. The war is so close to being won. They've been saying that for like two years. We're so close to winning this war. Putin's on his heels. He's in his underground bunker. It's almost over, you guys. Just send that extra 30 bill over, and we're about to do it. As soon as we get this museum built, it's over for them. How are you just building museums when you're supposedly in a large-scale war is what I would like to know.
Dude, what do you think about when they say we're going to support them whatever uh, forever? Like they say that in America about like Ukraine and Israel where it's like let's just say like in ca- Canada's like we're going to support Ukraine forever. It's like what if they like attacked Canada? I'm not saying they would, but like saying forever where it's like I you say that to like your wife. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I'll love you forever. And like to your family, but even they, it's like, yo, if you say that one more time, like, you know, like, you know I'm not going to come to Christmas dinner. Like there's like, it's like, we'll let, dude, you don't, they don't even, Canada doesn't even like their own people, like for a second, let alone forever. It's not like they're like, we're going to love conservatives in Canada forever. Mm-hmm. Like they don't even like them now. They, they were mad at the truckers and stuff for protesting. So it's like to, to pledge a forever allegiance to a foreign country is astronomical. It should be, you know, we support Ukraine. For, for at least now or the next five years because it's strategically good for the world and good for Canada. Like that's a statement that makes sense. Not like we will support them literally forever. It's like, how do you know that <laughs> for sure? Forever sets them up for the, at least, you know, the next 10 to 20 years. They obviously have wanted to turn that into a new Iraq and Afghanistan and it didn't work, or at least it's not going as well. Because I'd imagine if you broke down each time congress passed a bill to send money to iraq and afghanistan there would be tons of stuff in there that seemed crooked or at least you'd have a lot of questions about and that was about having their own soldiers there so now when it's not even about having your own people sent over there to die or to fight people kind of detach themselves from it a lot more and then this stuff just gets thrown in there and they're like yeah forever we support them it's only a few billion dollars of your money i mean what's what are you really doing with this million dollars this could be going to you know they would just give it to our outlets here like they would just give it to the state broadcaster here and they do give them much more money to than that it was like 1.7 billion the state broadcaster got in 2021 i believe so they're no they're not shy in doing it, there is one politician, albeit an unelected one at the moment, Maxime Bernier. I don't, I'm sure you've heard of him yeah. at some point. He came out against it and pointed it out, and he was one of the people who really, re- really got it uh, into people's feeds. But this uh, organization, where they're just, you know, showcasing how great it is. Look how great it is that you have to wear this blast shield in case it gets blown up. Let me tell you the. The shields um, are going to help if it blows up. That's not- exactly what I was going to say. An anti-tank <laughs> mine, you're you're completely done. And a anti-personnel mine, your limb is go- gone. So I guess you're taking... Look, we are inclusive. We're wearing hijabs while we're also de- taking care of landmines. Completely insane stuff. It's parody level. Bernie, I know he he was popular last election, but he didn't perform mel- well at all. Like, Is he gaining more steam or now? Um, they're about the same in the polling. I mean, they got a lot more votes last time, but it didn't result in any seats, right? Any anybody getting elected? So it's it's hard to tell because when they pull the same amount nationally, you really what you need is one place to do well enough to win a seat. So well, why, it, yeah, why is Bernie though? Like he's the only one, even last election, that was like even somewhat real. How come mm-hmm. he? How come like there's not like ten percent of Canada Canadians or twenty percent that like him? It was something like 200,000 out of 30 million votes or, so, or not 30 million votes, but uh, out of, you know, the amount of people that voted, I was going to, in my mind, it's, you really need like 33, 35% to win the election. So they got a minuscule amount, but you know, it, it's because it's spread out across the country so thin his support, but Canada's still much more liberal than the United States. Like that's why we have two liberal parties, a green party a conservative party and then other parties that can't win any seats but are more right wing. Can you can you get Woody over here? I want to get Woody's opinion. Bring bring Woody up to the mic. Um he doesn't work. <laughs> I no, discovered this yesterday. Just bring him up to the mic. He'll, he'll, I, I, we'll get him. I'll translate for him. There's a snake in my boots. I've lived in Alberta my whole life and I can't believe I have to pay for these dang queers to to gender <laughs> surgery and you can't Woody, dude, chill out, bro. You're gonna you're gonna get some trouble, man. We don't talk like that here. That's how we talk when I was a kid. I'm I'm disgusted. All right. Okay. Thanks, my guy. I won't raise his wrist the whole yeah, time. Yeah, I don't want to get. I dude, I want to get banned from Patreon. So like, I felt like he was gonna drop some crazy like. Pretty anti-Semitic. Turn it up, Jordan.